Hi friends, welcome to day one of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Today we are going to be cunning sauerkraut. If you're unfamiliar with the Every Bit Counts Challenge, it's a challenge put on by Three Rivers Homestead in which she challenges people to just simply preserve at least one thing every day in the month of August. Some days we'll have big preserving projects, some days we'll have small. We're gonna be putting out one video a week, kind of a review of all of the things we've preserved that week. So this is the first week and this is a short week. So there's only gonna be three days included in this because it's the first, the second, and the third. But like I said, today we are gonna be making sauerkraut. This could not be easier. And the health benefits of sauerkraut are enormous. There's more probiotic power in one tablespoon of sauerkraut than there is like an entire bottle of pills, um, probiotic pills. So it is really worth it for your gut health. And if you just like the taste of sauerkraut, I'm not totally a fan of the taste of sauerkraut, but I make myself eat it for the health benefits. So it's good to have around. Um, I got this cabbage from Azure Standard and we're gonna go ahead and whip up some sauerkraut. It is one of the easiest things you will ever make. I'm not kidding. Generally speaking, one small to medium cabbage head makes one jar. I have one tiny cabbage head and a medium one and a little bit larger. So three to four jars maybe, we'll see. Um, but the first thing you wanna do, and I've already done this, is peel off any blemished leaves and then you wanna wash it really good. Now, the one thing you wanna know is when you're fermenting, you need to make sure everything is absolutely sterilized and perfectly clean because it is not gonna go through that boiling process and you don't want the chance that there's any bacteria growing in there. Um, I have a sanitization cycle on my dishwasher, which makes it really simple. I just stick everything in there, run the sanitization cycle, and it's good to go. Um, if you don't have a dishwasher with that or don't have a dishwasher at all, boiling water does the trick. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bigger head of cabbage and I am going to pull off some of the big leaves. And these are gonna act as covers and I'll show you what to do with these later, but we'll set these to the side for now. All right, I have this set to the side. Green cabbage, purple cabbage, it doesn't matter. Cabbage is cabbage. Some of you might have a preference one way or the other, and that's totally fine. Do what you prefer. I like to kind of mix it. It adds to the aesthetic value for me. Really though, once the purple cabbage is in here, it's all gonna turn purple. So anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this cabbage in half. And I'm just gonna cut the core out of each of the pieces. All right, now that I have all of my cores cut out, I'm just gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut thin strips, just really thin all the way down strips. And you can cut them as small as you like and I'm gonna put them just in this big bowl. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons per cabbage head. And this all depends on how salty you like it and how big the cabbage heads are. Since I had a really tiny one, I'm gonna go with one for that one, and then one for the medium sized one and two for the big one. I like to use Redmond's Real Salt. It's not iodized, it's just, got a lot of minerals. And at this point, if you like flavored sauerkraut, you can add some flavoring. I know a lot of people will add dill to it or some spices to it. You can add that. This is the point where you want to add it. Now, here's where we get our hands dirty. You're just going to kind of reach in and crush this up. Also, make sure your hands are nice and clean. This really is pretty much it. I mean, when I said it doesn't get much easier, it doesn't get much easier. <laughs> As you squeeze 
the juices are gonna start to be released and the cabbage is gonna start breaking down with the salt. And really we wanna make sure the salt is evenly incorporated throughout. And you can even taste a little piece to see if it's salty enough for you. All right, we have our sauerkraut here and I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for a couple of hours and then I'm gonna re-mash it. Letting it sit a couple of hours will help the salt draw more of the moisture out so that when you jar it up, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up and I'll see you back here in a couple hours. All right, it's been a couple hours. Let's see how we're doing. And you can see the cabbage is drawn up a bit. We're gonna even crush it some more and get really a lot of that juice out of there. And the more you can crush it, the better. Because the juice that we crush out of here acts as our brine that covers it up. Now, if you end up with an older cabbage or something that doesn't have as much juice, um, you can make your own saltwater brine and cover it. But in my experience, most of the time, the cabbage will have enough brine to cover itself once you pack it in the jars. All right, now we are gonna take our cabbage and pack our jars. Now, like I said, these are sterilized jars and you wanna leave about an inch and a half headspace. So more headspace than you would if you were canning. And that's because slowly over time, this is gonna release juice and gas and as it ferments and you want it to be able to not explode. <laughs> Now you can just smash it with your hand. I have one of these that is from Mason Top and that helps you crush it down into the jar. And as you can see, as I squish this down, the juice is starting to fill up. But also don't forget, I have quite a bit of juice in the bottom of this, so I can use that as well. All right, so that was enough to fill two jars. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of the excess liquid. Remembering to keep that inch and a half of headspace. Most important thing as you're fermenting these is to make sure that all of the material from the cabbage stays underneath the brine. And that way it can't mold because it's not, it's not attached to the air. So that's where these come in. The cabbage leaves that we pulled off, we're gonna use to kind of hold all of the loose material down under. Now, if you have a weight, you can also use a weight. And actually, I'm gonna put the cabbage on here and then I'm gonna put a weight on top of this because I wanna make sure that stays under. And the reason I do this with a weight is because some of these cabbage pieces are tiny and sometimes they can eke around the weight. This just ensures, it kind of covers up the teeny pieces and allows you to hold them down so that nothing, none of the plant matter is touching oxygen. And you do wanna check this every few days just to make sure everything is as is. I have these weights from Mason Tops that we're gonna put in here. I'm gonna take these. You do not have to have these, but they're super helpful. They are called pickle pipes and they're also from Mason Tops. And I'll link the kit where you can get all of these fermentation things. They have a little hole in the spout that allows them to expel air as these ferment. And that way you don't have to check on them as often. Now I would still recommend you keep an eye on these because the last thing you want is for them to be exploding in your pantry but the pickle pipes allow you to not have to check on them so much. 
if, if you just put a regular lid on, you'll have to do what's called burping them, and that's totally fine. But once or twice a day, especially right when it, you first start the ferment, you are going to want to open the lid if you have a regular lid and just let some air out. This just allows burping to happen naturally without you messing with it. So that's all there is to this. These just are gonna sit in a cool dark place for about two weeks and then they're ready to go. Once they're done, I'll stick them in my fridge or if you have a cold storage, you can put them in cold storage. And as long as the material stays under the brine, these will last for months and months. So these are really fantastic. Like I said, if you're looking for a way to increase your gut health, these are a fantastic way to do it and super incredibly easy. So for our next project, I think Michaela's gonna be with us and she's gonna be making jelly. So that'll be our day two project. So stay tuned for that. Hello and welcome back. This is project two of our Everbits Counts Challenge and today we're gonna to be making triple berry jam. Um, we have three quarters pound of blueberries, blackberries and strawberries. And first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mash these in a pot with some water. We'll put this on medium-high heat and pour in our berries. These strawberries are from our little Amish store. The blueberries are from Azure, and I went and picked the blackberries at my grandma's house. If you're doing fresh fruit like this, you're going to need to wash them, and I already washed these. So Now that our berries are mashed, we're going to let this sit on medium-high heat and bring it to a boil, and I'll see you when it's boiling. Alright, so while this is boiling, I'm going to add in our lemon juice and calcified water. Two teaspoons of calcified water. Um, this calcified water comes in the Pomona's pectin packet, a quarter cup of lemon juice. And we're gonna stir that in and bring it back to a boil. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna mix in our half a cup of stevia and our two teaspoons of Pomona's pectin powder. So here's our Pomona's pectin, our half a cup of stevia. Mix that up. And now that this is back to a boil, we're going to mix in our Pomona's pectin and stevia slowly. Mix it in. We're gonna make sure we can't see any of those chunks left of, from this powder. All right, so now that this is all mixed up, I am going to turn the heat off. All right, so we're over here and we have our sterilized jars. They're cleaned and ready. And I'm just gonna start pouring this in. This is supposed to be four to five jars of jelly. And we're going to do a quarter inch of headspace. All right, so we'll check the headspace. And this one looks good. We're gonna go and screw the ring on until it's finger tight. And then we're going to screw it one more time. This is going to be, um, I'm going to enter these in the fair. And now we're going to get our bubbles out with this end. You can just use a regular knife if you wanted to. All right, so now we're going to stick these in our water bath canner. Processing time is 10 minutes, which means um, right after it's boiling, we will let it set boiling for 10 minutes. 
and then we'll turn the water off and let it set for another 15 minutes and pull it out. All right, so these are all done. Alright, so that's it and I can't wait to eat these. I'll see you in the next video. Alright, this week we have had some really quick ones. This is no exception. Taylor and I are going to a sewing expo so we wanted to get some done quickly and out of the way and then get on the road. So today we're going to be making fermented onions. Now fermented onions are another great way to get your probiotic in and honestly this is one of the easiest, one of my favorites because you can sneak them in a lot of things. <laughs> if you like onions on your burger or onions on your steak or onions in your salad, really you can pull these out and use them um, as is. And just like the sauerkraut, actually these are probably easier than sauerkraut because there's not a lot of the smashing down and things like that. Way, way simple. So what we're gonna do first, we like, like with the sauerkraut, you wanna make sure everything is clean and sterile. We have a quart jar and I have two onions. You can use red onions, you can use white onions, anything is fine. And you're gonna want to peel these onions and we're, I'm gonna cut these onions in rings and I'm gonna put them into this jar. So that's step one. Let's go ahead and get that done. If you don't have weights, you can also use the peel of the onion like we use the peel of the cabbage to hold down the onion underneath the brine. And I'm just gonna cut these into rings because that's how I like them, but you can cut them however you want. The next thing is super easy. We're gonna make our brine. We're gonna take a pint of filtered water, and then we're gonna take four teaspoons of unrefined salt. I like to use Redmond's. And then all we're gonna do is just stir this until it's dissolved. And we wanna pour this over top. And just like with the cabbage, the most important thing is that they're submerged. And you're gonna take your weight or your onion skin if you're using that and just submerge the onions underneath. And that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pickle pipe on this so I do not have to burp it. And that's all there is to it. Then this can set for about two weeks and it's ready to go. Then you'll wanna take it out and put it in cold storage or your refrigerator and you can pull out those onions and get that probiotic power. All right, we will see you next week in week two of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can join us all month long.